Hi, my name is Tony McLaughlin, and I'm talking to Petra Plompin from EBA Clearing. Petra, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you, Tony. Very, uh, my pleasure to be here. Very nice. Hey, Petra, tell us a little bit about EBA Clearing and your role. Sure, happy to. EBA Clearing is a provider of uh, pan-European payment systems. We operate two of the uh, systemically important payment systems for high value and for SEPA payments. And we also have the RT1, uh, the service for instant payments in Euro. And we are currently developing uh, a request to pay service, a payment yes. service, which I'm very busy with at the moment. I can imagine. So um, tell us what is request to pay because in Europe and open banking under PSD2, there's already a payment initiation functionality. So um, what is request to pay and why is it different from payment initiation under PSD2? A good question. Um, <laughs> the request to pay, is, is it's a very broad concept and it is not really actually new. I mean, there are a lot of things around that are already call, called or, or can be captured as a request to pay or request to pay based solution. Yes. What we do not have yet is something that is on a pan-European basis. And uh, if you compare it to, to payment initiation, it, it's a bit different uh, the way we see it uh, work in a, in a four corner model will mean that we can have a service that is based on standards mm. uh, in the inter-PSP uh, environment, which will allow exchange of a request to pay, which is basically a means for the payee to uh, trigger a payment initiation by the payer. And uh, if you do that, there's an advantage, of course, for the, for the payee, and they get to, to trigger that payment initiation. Yes get to add all the data that they would like to see in the payment to support reconciliation. Yes. For the payer, it's easy because they can just approve the request and don't need to enter all the data. And if you do that in that four common model setup, you have the added advantage that both the uh, PSPs involved in the four corner model can authenticate and their mm -hmm. own customers. And that creates and builds trust in the infrastructure and in the service as a whole. Okay, so ju just a couple of things to unpack there. One thing is you mentioned four corner model. It might not be completely obvious to everyone what a four okay. corner model is. Uh, so what's your definition of a four corner model? Um, let, then maybe stepping back to what you called uh, the, the payment initiation uh, services that might also be helpful to end users and it will definitely be. Yes, um, but in that case, uh, for the payment that is initiated, and uh, did not both uh, payment service providers, the payment service provider of the payer and the payment service provider of the payee, get involved uh, mm. in the process. And in a four corner model, it will be the payee that reaches out to his own provider uh, with the necessary request, and that. Uh, provider then reaches out to the provider of the payer yes and that provider presents it to the payer and that Got way it. the payee and the payer both interact with their trusted providers and yes. the providers between them create the exchange and the trust in the end-to-end -end process okay. so look the, the difference then between what you you have built and the payment initiation under psd2 is that um, you've actually built an, an infrastructure, a centralized like messaging switch that the parties can connect to, whereas under PSD2, it's a case of every bank having published individual APIs. That's one of also one of the fundamental differences, right? You're providing an infrastructure rather, rather than it being based on individual bank APIs. That's correct. With the, the creation of that, that infrastructure, we create the standards and that enable an easy exchange between all the, all the players in the industry yes. that can support them in that exchange while they still have the, the chance and the opportunity to develop their end user solutions based on that standardized exchange. Got it. And you're using um, ISO 2022 messaging, I believe, uh, to facilitate this. Yes, that's correct. That's that's. Um, uh, for two reasons. On the one hand, there's a scheme being developed by the EPC 
and yes. we definitely will have our service compliant with that scheme. That scheme is also relying on the use of pane 13 and pane 14 ISO messaging. Yes. Uh, and at the same time, for the request to pay service, uh, we want to leverage uh, something that the industry has invested in heavily the last mm. couple of years, which is the real time environment. With the, role, the implementation and the rollout of instant payments, uh, all stakeholders in the industry have uh, invested heavily in creating an infrastructure that is online all the time, 24 seven, all days in yeah. the year. And that is an infrastructure based on ISO messaging. And that is something that we want to leverage to bring quick value. Okay, so the, so the request um, is done through this messaging layer, but then the actual payment initiation is made through um, SEPA instant credit transfers. Yes, and uh, that could both be a SEPA uh, credit transfer and a SEPA instant credit transfer. While of course you can imagine that in many use cases for request to pay, an instant uh, payment will be an ideal means. Yes. And, and vice versa, a request to pay can be an ideal means to leverage uh, the instant payment as such. Indeed, it should drive traffic through the instant payment uh, infrastructure. And just to remind us, as of where we are just now, what kind of coverage uh, do we have in Europe for the instant payment scheme? It, it's pretty good. It's an optional scheme. Uh, so not all PSPs have yet adhered to it. Uh, mm. If you look at our own world uh, and all the, the participants that have connected to RT1 in our, our instant payment system, then we see that by the end of the year, we should have a coverage and reach uh, that stands for about 90% of that what we currently cover in our normal credit transfer service. Yes. So we really see momentum building there and really nearing uh, a critical mass when it comes to yeah. reach. So you're getting towards ubiquity on the instant payment service. So in a, in a sense, the request to pay scheme is a, an overlay service. It sits on top. Yes, overlay has a bit of a, a different connotation sometimes, but indeed it is an, an extra layer uh, yeah. uh, separate from and on top of that uh, payment layer. It, it enables the exchange of data before the payment actually happens with all the benefits for the stakeholders. So what, what's your focus in terms of use cases, Petra? Are you focused on you know, consumer to business e-commerce, uh, consumer to business point of sale, uh, business to business, which, t which type of use cases do you think the request to pay scheme will um, really uh, be a great solution for? That, that's a discussion that we started with actually with the, uh, the institutions that we developed the service with uh, together. And we said, what should we focus on or should we focus mm. on something? And the conclusion there was, well, let's make something that is a thin layer that is really generic and flexible and able to support a lot of different scenarios. Yes. And going through it, uh, we, we came to the conclusion that it does make a difference whether you are in a real-time scenario with both the payer and the PE present and the whole process having to be done in a few seconds. Yes. Or scenarios like e-invoicing, where you would have mm. a more of a delay. But both situations could well be serviced by request to pay. And the, the institutions that we work with that will use request to pay as the the layer for their end user solutions, see opportunities in, in different areas. They see opportunities in the real time situations, but also definitely for the uh, e-invoice world. Yeah. So can I ask you a little bit about, I guess in what you have got in common with PSD2 is the need to obtain a strong customer authentication from the payer. And that has been an area where there's been a little bit of friction, obviously, you know, delays in terms of the implementation of strong customer, uh, customer authentication. Do you think that, or let me say, is, is the presence of good strong customer authentication mechanisms, which actually are, actually are provided by the payment services providers themselves, is, is that another dependency on the success of requests to pay? It doesn't have to be, uh, we, as, as mentioned, the request to pay is a layer separated from uh, the payment as such. And in the four corner model that I described, it would be really uh, up to the provider that has its relationship with the payer uh, where mm. that strong customer authentication takes place. 
So there could be actually a strength in there uh, that makes this model and this setup uh, of quicker value for end users and an end user solutions. Interesting. And um, in terms of where you are with the project, what stage are you at? I know that you've published standards. You just recently announced that you've completed the first phase, phase of your infrastructure build. So when does this all go live? Indeed, we, uh, and we announced recently that we now start the testing phase and we will soon uh, start testing with our, our users of the service. Mm -hmm. And we foresee a go live of R2P, our request to pay service, by November this year. Oh. And that would then coincide with the publication of the SRTP scheme from the EPC, which is currently uh, under consultation. Interesting. So also, I guess it's a critical thing to understand that um, you're not building the whole scheme. You're building the, the messaging switch, essentially, the infrastructure. And it's the EPC that's going to publish the, I feel like, the scheme rules, which is the, the framework within which the participants will operate and cover thing like, things like liability and refunds and all of this kind of stuff. So you're doing the infrastructure part and they're doing the scheme rules. Is that, is that right? That's right. It's similar to what we have in place for the uh, SEPA payments. The, the EPC is the manager of the direct yes. the SEPA transfer schemes. And there are uh, players in the industry like EBA Clearing that provide the infrastructure services to actually make yeah. these transactions happen. So Petra, just help us um, understand how request to pay fits into the broader um, European payment landscape because Recently, we've seen news of the EPI, the European Payments Initiative, by a number of banks. Um, there's development of uh, other types of uh, things in Europe, like TIPS, and um, even discussion about European Central Bank digital currency. So could you help us position this piece of the jigsaw puzzle into that broader European payments landscape? Uh, puzzle and piece of the puzzle is a, a really good uh, um, <laughs> word in this context because that's actually what the puzzle. Puzzle pay was mentioned and was called uh, when we started working on it. Because yes, we have these instant payments and it's, it's really a good thing to have the 24-7 uh, always on environment. But to make more of it than just make the existing payment processes faster, uh, there is this piece missing to really enable the initiation of such payments. And that's where request to pay come in. Yes. So it's an addition to instant payments in that sense. And mm. you mentioned the, the initiatives uh, like uh, EPI, the European Payments uh, Initiative, uh, where they are looking at uh, the end user solution level. How can we provide pan-European uh, services to users? And that will need some building blocks. Uh, instant payments is mentioned in that context as uh, the basis for such yeah. a solution. A request to pay is then one of the pieces currently still missing, but soon around um, to be added to that picture. And okay. to it. So it could well be a building stone, a building block in that solution. I see. So all, all of these things hopefully will come together in a, in a, in a good way in the end. Um, if, if people are interested to engage, if there are merchants out there who want to, um, you know, help define scheme or help to provide input or even who want to be early pilots, uh, presumably they should contact their, their banking partners or the members of the, of the scheme or the members of your uh, infrastructure. Yes, on our, on our website, we have a list indeed of the, the institutions that work with us uh, on, on developing this service. So they would be uh, the very yeah. right parties to discuss end user solutions and needs with. On, the, on the, the other hand, we do want to engage in, in that discussion and awareness. So on our website, we will also have some information on, on uh, you know, the, the white papers on request to pay. And yes. uh, we would be willing to provide uh, some information there as well and direct um, corporates or other interested in, in what the developments are. Fantastic. Well, well Petra, you've given us an awesome uh, overview of Request to Pay and it's very exciting that it's coming live in November this year. And it does seem to fill uh, a very needed uh, you know, space in the European payments landscape. Um, I want to ask you, though, I noticed that you're back in an office environment and therefore obviously you're you're generally and easing out of lockdown 
Um, you know, what have been your reflections on lockdown and how have things changed now that you're getting back into the office? Yes, back in the office, actually, um, only just starting. Uh, we have this company, as everybody else, of course, all been working from home, but we're now slowly starting our process of getting back to the office. Yes. At the same time, the, the, the home working arrangements and, and the continuity have been very good. Actually, mm. um, we just talked about the request to pay being in a testing phase. Yes. It was delivered two weeks early in that testing wow. phase. So even in these extraordinary circumstances, uh, the whole project, and that includes the engagement of the, the, the institutions that work with us, has been very high, and, and we see good results there. Fantastic. So that's well, been a smooth process. For such a fantastically complex project with multi-stakeholders, that's very impressive. So Petra, thank you very much for spending time with us today. It's been fascinating insight into something very topical, um, which lots of merchants and other players are very interested in. Um, so thank you very much for giving us this information and good luck with the project. Thank you very much and you're welcome. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Petra.